Hello everybody, welcome back to the video, and today I'm going to be trying to figure out who Donald Trump's VP should be. Arguably the biggest question of this election cycle, who's going to be Trump's VP? Several people have been listed. I've got nine people here I want to discuss, and then I'm just going to discuss highlights and what could be down points. Got a few on here that have also been ruled out by themselves, but I still think would be good options. Maybe they could change their mind. Let's get into this. Kicking off the list, Sarah Palin. Now, I don't think Sarah Palin is going to be the VP. However, just wanted to bring this up. She could be, right? She would definitely be a very unexpected pick. And there was that one guy that said Trump's VP has not been in the rumor mill. Don't know how much I trust that story, but if that is true, this could benefit Sarah Palin. She hasn't been rumored at all. In addition to that, she was also the first big celebrity endorsement that, well, you know, first, one of the first big endorsements that Trump got during his original bid. So if nothing else, maybe she'll be a cabinet member. Main thing that goes against her is the fact she was already a vice presidential candidate with uh, John McCain back in 2008. It would be kind of funny. But I don't know. Next up, Byron Donalds. Now, he is a representative from Florida and is currently a big name in the rumor mill for Trump's VP. And honestly, after watching a clip of him at the trial talking about it, I can really kind of undersee, I can really understand and see, that's what I meant to say, you know, where this is coming from. He would be a good pick. Also benefiting him, is the fact that he is on the younger side, 45, definitely could help at least balance the age part of the ticket because believe it or not, Trump is in his late 70s. So getting a younger running mate would probably be a good idea to help balance the ticket out in terms of age. So yeah, the only big issue with Donald's, and this is going to come up with a couple of other people, he's from Florida, Trump's main residency is in Florida, so in order to have Donald be his running mate, he would, Trump, would have to change his residency. Because in the Constitution it says you cannot have the president and the vice president be from the same state. Hence, Trump would have to change his residency to New York or something in order to have Donald's on the ticket. And he would have to be 100% confident that his VP would be a great VP and would also be a great president. So I don't know. That's the only thing kind of holding me back on Donald's. That and the fact that I think there are other people that would probably be better picks. But uh, the residency thing is going to come up a few other times. Tim Scott. Is, has been a long-running uh, rumor. And actually, currently, my grandma's main pick, you know, this is who she thinks it'll be. I mean, there's definitely some pluses to Tim Scott. You know, Trump said during Scott's campaign, he said, you know, he, he's doing more for me than he is for himself. So you could make the argument, potentially, that Scott was running for VP, but I think there's actually a stronger case for someone else running for VP. We're going to get to him later. But, I mean, Scott would be an interesting pick. Maybe would also be a way to appeal to the more Nikki Haley side of the Republican Party. Because uh, Nikki Haley actually appointed Tim Scott. So that could be a way that it goes. Uh, next up, Marco Rubio. I will admit, not my personal favorite for this. And if Trump has to change his residency for one of these, I think this would be the least worthwhile. I mean, Rubio could easily appeal to the Hispanics. But at the same time, I don't think he's a name that gets a lot of people fired up. He ran in 2016. I mean, maybe a cabinet position? But I don't know. I really don't. I think 
Rubio might not be that much of an excitement, but if you have different opinions, let me know. And while you're in the comment section, uh, just scroll up a little bit and like and subscribe. All right, moving on. Uh, Candace Owens. Okay, so this one might have been a joke, but Candace Owens, during an interview with Trump, actually brought up the idea of being VP. Might have been a joke, but when the news came out that she had left the Daily Wire, I thought this was the reason as to why. I thought, uh, she's leaving the Daily Wire to run as Trump's VP. And then she basically said, uh, no, to that. She ruled herself out. However, I do think that she would be a great pick for Trump's VP, or maybe even a good runner-up for press secretary. We're going to get to who I think should be press secretary uh, in a minute, but uh, Owens would definitely be a good VP for Trump, but she already ruled herself out, so let's move on. Next up, Tucker Carlson. Okay, I will admit, this is one of those ones I heard, I heard that there was a strong wanting for Tucker Carlson to be VP, and I was like, Really? I will admit, this confused me a little bit. You know, I've seen several interview clips, but one clip in particular told me, at least if Tucker was the VP, the debates against Kamala Harris would be really good. And that would be when he said, when he got Mike Pence to say, it's not my concern. Go find that clip. That is the clip that at least told me the debates would be good with Tucker Carlson. Um, but I don't know what he could really add to the ticket. There's still a strong demand, but I think the demand for him to VP definitely shrunk after the Putin interview. I mean, I wouldn't mind Tucker as VP, but I don't know if it's the smartest move. But he is also the favorite of Melania Trump and Donald Trump Jr., so that kind of helps out his case. Dr. Ben Carson. Okay, this is this will be a great pick. You know, I've said to a few members of my family, you know, he's in the running. And people in my family, really my parents mainly, have said he would be a great VP. You know, whereas Trump's more energetic, Dr. Carson is a little bit more on the calm side, which could help balance out the ticket. My only hang-up with Carson being the VP, I think he would be a very good VP pick, is age. Oh, I think a lot of people are not liking the fact that the main candidates for both parties are, you know, as old as they are. Trump is 77, about to be 78. Biden is 81. Even if you want to look to third party candidates, RFK Jr. is 70. So, I mean, I don't know how good it would be. Plus, you know, uh, Carson's around the same age as Trump. Only a couple years difference between the two of them. He would be a great pick for VP, but would age become a big concern? I think that's the only thing that would be a preventing a measure of preventing this ticket from happening. And this would be a very good ticket, in my opinion. But is age something that Trump is thinking about? And next up, Ron DeSantis. This would be the perfect ticket. Trump and DeSantis were the front runners. Trump was always the front runner. DeSantis was always second. There were actually polls early on that showed DeSantis as the winner of this election cycle before the indictments happened. So, a Trump-DeSantis ticket would be an easy winner. And if there were anyone, if there was anyone that Trump would change his residency so that they could run with him, it would be DeSantis. This would be a strong ticket. DeSantis would easily appeal to the Hispanic crowd, right? Because he's Hispanic, right? So that's something that he would have. And in addition to that, he is one of the most liked governors of Florida. Well, he's the governor of Florida. You know, I think he might be one of the most liked in the state's history 
And then, you know, I think he's one of the most liked in general across the country. So, what's the holdup? He ruled himself out. Yeah, he said he isn't going to be the VP. So, that kind of stinks, because this, honestly, in my opinion, would be the perfect ticket. But DeSantis ruled himself out. So, I mean, hey, keep going in Florida, but maybe 2028. Okay, final one, Vivek Ramaswamy. I mean, come on. Yeah. The, he's the favorite to be VP. It was looking like for a while he was off the list, and then back in May, he popped back up on the list. He's back in the rumor mill. He's a very strong candidate. He essentially came out of nowhere during his campaign, wound up getting 8% in the Iowa caucus, which isn't great, but actually placed him at fourth place during that competition when Trump won most of Iowa. Plus, Vivette could also appeal to the younger crowd. Trump's already doing good with younger voters, but going for a younger VP would be a really interesting call. Plus, I believe this would make Vivek the youngest VP. I Correct me if I'm wrong, on a ticket, I believe he, he, he would be. He's in his 30s. So that would be kind of crazy. But in addition to that, during his campaign, he got a lot of online creators and celebrity endorsements. So, you know, those people see that the guy they endorsed, right, is the VP for Donald Trump. Uh, yeah, I endorsed this guy. Go vote for this ticket. So I could legitimately see this happening. Plus, there's also that clip of Trump saying he'd be open to Ramaswamy as his running mate, which was really early on. Combine that with speculation that Ramaswamy was running to be Trump's running mate. And him saying a few times, talking about debating Kamala. And, look, I think, yeah, look, I could talk about several, several people here, but legitimately, it's going to be Vivek. That's my take on it. There's aspects that could go towards everyone, but that could help Trump fully appeal to the youth. He could help gravitate the youth vote to Trump. In addition to that, he also has the backing of social media stars. People like the Pauls. You know, the Paul brothers don't really know much about him. I saw one funny clip, which was um, one of them after they knocked someone out in a boxing match, uh, telling Vivek that he punched him because he voted Biden. It's a funny clip. Apparently, those guys have loads of subscribers. So, they, you know, them endorsing Ram Swamy for, you know, during his Republican presidential bid. But, you know, hearing he's the vice presidential pick could have made them say, hey, go vote. Go vote for them. In addition, it just, I think he's the best pick. And constantly, when people are asked, who do they want to be VP? Ramaswamy. He wins almost every poll. He is the number one answer among most people. He would be the best pre vice president for Donald Trump. And, yeah, I, I think he's going to be the next vice president. But, anyway, we will, we will be finding out soon. Because the convention is actually next month, as of the time of recording this. We're a little over a month away. So, I mean, I'll probably make a video on who the VP actually is. So, yeah. Main guess, Ramaswamy. Uh, second place, I'd say it's probably Carson. And then Tucker Carlson. Those are the three that I'm guessing for VP but mainly Ramaswamy. If I were to give odds, 
say there's a 75% chance of Ramaswamy, I'd be willing to say like a 20% chance it's Dr. Van Carson, and maybe like a 5% chance that it's Tucker Carlson. But there you have it. That's it for this video. Like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.